and to despise or at least denigrate things that are working clashes. They denigrate sports. They denigrate um, um, all sorts of places of eating where workers eat. They admire places that are associated with the professionals. This is not surprising. Um, it's because it's the character of our movement. Some of our movements are more like Yale Law School, like Oxford, than they are like a working class pub. That's a problem, right? So and that might uh, it, um, impact who comes and who stays, right? How much turnover there is. That's an interesting point also. Um, wasn't the debate more about, isn't the coordinator class an old problem? Yeah, yeah it's clearly an old problem. It, they became the ruling class in the Soviet Union. Have I read Tony Cliff? Yes, but a long time ago. Um, uh, Civil War was the problem. Behind you. Civil War was the problem. In other words, what happened in the Soviet Union happened basically because of a perversion, because of an outside pressure that perverted a process that otherwise would have been much nicer. Um, quote, I consider that if the Civil War had not plundered our economic organs of all that was strongest, most independent, most endowed with initiative, we should undoubtedly have entered the path of one-man management much sooner and much less painfully. That's Trotsky. He's not blaming it on the war. He's saying we could have gotten there quicker if it hadn't been for the damn war interfering with our agenda. Um, wasn't it more about Marx than Lenin? Yes. In a, in a real sense, I think the debate or my comments maybe arguably were more about Marx than Lenin. That's, I, don't, I don't know what, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to, I don't know what the linkage is precisely between the concepts and the strategic choices. Many of the strategic choices and not specific to Leninism. A lot of things that Alex says aren't specific to Leninism, it doesn't seem to me. Um, so I, I think of it as Marxism-Leninism. Um, but I do think that it's underlying... Look, if it's just temporal differences, it's not fundamental. The fundamental differences are going to have to do to un with underlying concepts. And so that's why it, it tends to get back to the conceptual framework. I'm almost done here. Um, I guess I, I wrote down do agree. Oh, I know. The, the last person who spoke, uh, conveniently, said uh, she did agree with the list of, of things that I said, I hope we can agree about. And I, that's good. I hope that's true. To the extent that's true, I think it's um, you know, a good thing and it, it, it's very promising. Let me just say this. I do, you should know, I mean, I have a lot of friends. I interact with a lot of people. Um, a, a lot of people um, have different, have, have, have far more critical views than I do of, say, Leninist organization. Um, they would feel, what are you doing there, Michael? Right? Et cetera, et cetera. You can imagine the reverse also, I think. Right? Yes. Um, uh, the fact that you invited me here, the fact that you had me speak four times, the fact that you had me speak in a big session like this, I do think means a lot. I do think it speaks a lot, and I'll tell you in all honesty, I'm not sure that, in quotes, my side of the movement would do it. I'm not sure, I have to admit to you, and it pains me to do so, that, um, that, that elements on my side of the movement, so to speak, I mean, you know, that's not fair, but you know what I mean, um, would say, invite Alex to come to a conference to speak four times in front of very large audiences and then have their membership listen to Alex in a debate. Um, so I think that is very, it shouldn't be admirable. I mean, it should be obvious that we all behave that way. But in the world we live in, regrettably, it's very admirable. And I want to thank you and, and uh, compliment you. Lopsided debate, um, and I, I, I regret that. And I just want to assure Michael that had more people put in slips supporting his critique of Leninism, they would have been called in to ensure a better, a better balanced d d debate. 
rather than so many people, because, because of how the debate turned out, so many people have responded to specific points that Michael made that I don't in summing up, and I'm going to try to be briefer than him because I think it's fair that he should have had a lot of time to, 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 to sum up. I'm not going to answer the points that he made, um, even the ones <laughs> which were quite a lot that he made in the summing up that I disagreed with. What I want to do more is to, um, is to explain to, to try and explain us to him because I, I think clearly he finds us a bit of a puzzle. Um, and I think that, first of all, what I want to say is the reason why people here, who represent, the people who spoke, who represent all sorts of different aspects in terms of age and history in the DSWP, responded so unanimously to, to, in disagreeing with him, isn't because, you know, we're a bunch of dogmatists who kind of work ourselves up, um, in heresy hunting, but because these are issues, particularly the issues of the Russian Revolution and Stalinism, that we have spent a great deal of time thinking about, discussing, trying to understand, and trying to make sense of. And in particular, trying to identify the, th the thread of what was not simply positive, but liberating and profoundly important about the Russian Revolution, and distinguish it from the horror that that followed, followed from it disastrously and regrettably, a horror that then succeeded in reproducing itself in different parts of the world and obscenely, in our view, proclaiming itself as Marxist and Leninist when it represented the opposite of what for us Marxism and Leninism is, is, is all about. It's not that we haven't thought about these issues. We have thought about these issues a lot. And the conclusion that we've drawn is there's a fundamental difference between what we regard as authentic Leninism, the theory and practice of Lenin and, and, and the Bolsheviks culminating in the, in the revolution of October 1917, and most of what is called or calls itself Leninism around the world. And a lot of, to some extent, this has been, we've been debating past each other because because of Michael's tendency to lump all, all Leninists together and then to find the, res the respects in which we don't appear to be, to conform to, to his stereotype of Leninists as, as a kind of anomaly. Do we think that we know everything? That we've solved, we or kind of Marxism collectively have solved all the problems that the movement faced? Absolutely not. I mean, in all sorts of ways, we're in a new and unfathomable period, one in which there are all sorts of challenges that, that haven't been faced by past generations of Marxists. Respect, for example, the kind of electoral coalition that we've been involved in forging out of the anti-war anti movement. You know, however many books about the history of Marxism and socialism, I don't think you'll find anything that will, that will provide us for a formula for building respect and, and so on and so forth. There are particular areas where I think historically Marxism has been weak in terms of specifying the, um, what a democratic planned economy would be like. And that's why, personally, I find Michael's work very interesting because he's put so much thought into addressing that, that uh, question. So we, like everyone else in the movement, have a lot to learn that we need to try and collectively solve as we go forward. The final point I want to make to Michael is this. He quoted Marx, it comes from Marx, saying that you should judge um, you should judge people not by what they say, but by what they do. And his problem, you know, he said, you, you know, he described me as an anarcho-syndicalist, or seeming like an anarcho-syndicalist, which, you know, some uncharitable comments will no doubt hold against me for, my, for a long time to, to come. But, uh, I think that I think that I'm not, I don't think that the, the reasons why he or whoever it was he talked to, talk to might find, might think that was a plausible description of me isn't to do with some particular aberrant qualities of myself. It reflects something much more collective about the, the practice and the theory and the traditions of the Socialist Workers Party in the IS tendency. More, more generally, we are people who stand for self-emancipation.